Hello and welcome back to the channel. And here we are again talking about the Northern Ireland Protocol, which the UK government is threatening to cause more problems on again. Anyone might be forgiven for thinking that Boris Johnson liked to trot out Northern Ireland Protocol issue and cause problems every time he has a scandal or some other thing to bury. But of course I digress. We must talk about the Northern Ireland Protocol as I always do. So as a negotiator, I can look at this problem and think of certain common themes that come out of it. So in this video, I want to talk about the theme of unilateral action, which can be a little bit more complicated than people think. Now, for anyone new to this channel, I am the collaborative negotiator, professional negotiator of over 10 years of experience. And talking about this sort of thing is what I do in my training course. And I explain to people how to do actions, how to make their negotiation succeed. And if you want examples of how to make negotiations succeed, look at anything to do with Brexit and do the exact opposite. So let's open up with a broad and generic question. And that question is, should you ever do a unilateral action in a negotiation? And the answer to that is no and yes. In terms of the no, if you're in the middle of a negotiation and you take a unilateral action, you're doing something that is outside of agreement. And you can hardly expect the other side to be happy about you doing that. Because of course, what you have said by doing a unilateral action in the middle of the negotiation and not securing their agreement is that you do not value their concern, their opinion, and so on. So that is not what you might call conducive to good negotiation. It's also a very poor behavior. And behaviors are important in negotiation. So carrying out any kind of unilateral action because you cannot secure agreement is not going to improve your chances of actually getting an agreement. But of course, there is a bit of an exception to this. And the exception to this is when you take a positive unilateral action. So what do I mean by positive unilateral action? Well, one of the things you have to remember at any negotiation is that they're always done in principle, agreement in principle. So that means until both sides actually sign on the dotted line, everything that is negotiation is always subject to potential change. However, sometimes that can be difficult. Sometimes there can be a deadline that needs to be met. Um, you know, supplies ordered, some kind of action that needs to be taken. So what one side can do is say, we're gonna get ahead of this. We're going to implement this agreement ahead of it being ready. Now that technically is a unilateral action, but that is a unilateral action that you are doing with the other side's consent. So that is one example of when you can do unilateral action and it can help the negotiation. But what you have to remember is that when you do that, you do so at your own risk. So if the other side decide not to sign the deal, well, you have to deal with the consequences of the fact that you went ahead before everyone was ready, whether there's a cost implication or whatever. So that is an important thing to consider if you're considering a unilateral action as a course of any negotiation. Now, of course, this is Brexit we're talking about. So, of course, you can guarantee that anything done in Brexit will be wrong. So how can, or how could the Brexiteer perhaps have done a positive unilateral action? And I can give you an example. For those, if you can remember, think back to the time Theresa May and David Davis, when he was the Brexit secretary, and think back to the issue of when the Conservative Party wanted to use the status, the settlement status of EU citizens as a bargaining chip in the negotiations. They treated that as a tradable in order supposedly to get concessions from the EU on the treatment of UK citizens, well, 
probably not treatment due cases and probably something else completely arbitrary like the divorce bill or something but well with that so what they did is they tried to hold hostage the status of EU citizens now in that scenario if I had been advising the government which of course I wasn't because I wasn't involved in Brexit I would have told them to do the exact opposite I would have told them to do a unilateral action where you state publicly that no matter what the EU agrees to the UK government will ensure that EU citizens are treated fairly and given settlement status and what the UK government and the EU are actually doing is negotiating the details now that is a unilateral action and that's a very positive unilateral action and the reason why is because you you're stating a principle you're not really stating too much in the way of specifics but you're stating a principle a very key principle that is very hard to disagree with and the principle here is that the EU citizen will be treated decently and will be granted settlement status just how that looks like and how it will be implemented is subject to the detail you know on the negotiation and if the UK government had done that they would actually have put the EU Commission on the back foot because it would have been very hard for the EU Commission to argue against that you can hardly argue for your system to be treated worse than you know is being offered but they would have been very much welcomed it and they would have raised their game they would have actually have been willing to give concessions back to the UK recognizing that the UK was declaring its intent to act decently so there's an example of what the Brexiteers could have done at a unilateral uh, you know, action to help the negotiation now be warned of course you've got to be quite measured when you do this so taking perhaps a completely different example that I know of was that when President Trump was negotiating with the North Korean leader um, he unilaterally took the decision to cancel the joint UK sort of South not UK the US South Korean sort of military exercises he didn't actually get any concessions back from North Korea as a result of that that was not a well-timed well-assessed unilateral action and that is one of the clear examples of why he was an absolutely rubbish negotiator despite what he might think with his overinflated ego so back to Brexit they could have done that unilateral, unilateral action so it's not inconceivable that there are potential ways that they can make break the deadlock so let's come back to the Northern Ireland Protocol what could they actually do to unilaterally improve things that is not an easy question to answer what I can tell you is what they are currently doing won't help it is a negative unilateral action it is we don't like what you're saying we can't agree with you so we're going to do what we want to do anyway and by the way probably break international law and annoy everybody into the process so that is not the way to do it so what sort of thing they could perhaps do is they could go the other way positively on the Northern Ireland Protocol so what I mean by that if they find a way to fully implement the Northern Ireland Protocol or implement above and beyond what it is the EU is actually asking for so thinking a little bit speculatively they could perhaps declare Northern Ireland or agree with the Northern Ireland Assembly that Northern Ireland should be a special economic zone having all the benefits of being part of the UK whilst also all the benefits of the single market now this is not a particularly well thought out idea I'm not going to put any flesh on this one I'm just using that as an example to say what UK government could potentially think about as a way of breaking the deadlock on Northern Ireland protocol in a unilateral way of course the alternative is always that they could actually do the hard work and reach an agreement with the EU in order to you know resolve the problem but that just sounds like too much hard work so of course they won't do that so my final thoughts on this particular theme 
Well, negotiations are not just won by what you agree. Negotiations are won by holding the high ground, by having a set of principle that the other side can agree to or respect. And it's important to understand that because a lot of the problems that sometimes people make, and the current UK government makes this all the time, if they keep thinking that negotiation with the EU is a bit like negotiating a rug or something along those lines, you know, you haggle. They treat it as a haggling bargaining type of negotiation. And that is not how government level negotiations work. You know, you can't really bribe a government very easily. You can't really, you know, and every government is sovereign. Within their own borders, they get to make their own decisions, and there are very few exceptions to that. As a consequence, when you're negotiating with the government, you're negotiating on a level playing field, no matter how big they are. When the US is negotiating with Cuba, for example, Cuba doesn't bow to everything the US wants just because they are a big superpower. Cuba, rightly or wrongly, will insist on its own concern being met and its own position being put forward, no matter the fact it is a vastly smaller country. So even when the UK is negotiating with the EU, that same principle still applies. So what helps to win the negotiation is by being seen to be the more dominant part, being seen to be more competent. And in that area, the current UK government negotiation strategy fails quite badly. The other thing to think about is that the Northern Ireland Protocol remains what it has always been. I wouldn't say a non-issue, that's the wrong way to describe it, but it is an artificially created issue. It's an issue created by Boris Johnson being lazy and taking shortcuts, and also by very bad politics, the politics of Westminster. The, pol the politics of Northern Ireland Assembly, let's call them the Democratic Unionist Party. So all those individuals and groups are using the Northern Ireland Protocol for their political ends. The Northern Ireland Protocol itself is not actually an issue that cannot, you know, that, that is impossible to solve. It's actually relatively straightforward to, to solve if people are willing to build consensus and compromise. Which leads me to the final remark, which uh, despite what I have said about using positive unilateral action in a negotiation, all negotiations succeed on the basis of consensus, always. You have to build consensus with the other side. You have to build consensus within your own side, and people always underestimate that. You might even have to build consensus with third parties to the negotiation. All negotiations are about building consensus and the person that succeeds is the person that is better at getting more people to agree with them and that means consensus. Which is why I've always held up Barnier as a prime example of one of the best consensus builders that anyone has seen in recent years. So I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing the comments uh, below. If you do like these videos, please do like and subscribe.